Teaching our kids to respect and celebrate diversity is a main priority in today's society. However, some may struggle to teach this valuable lesson in an age-appropriate way. That's where children books come in. They are a fun way to introduce their little ones to important concepts at an early age and are great conversation starter. For parents, why you ask? Because you get to talk to your kids about privilege, difference, respect, empathy and inclusivity. Because of that exploration, children come to better understand the world in which they live in and their relationship to it. Written language in its literary uses is an instrument of artistic impression. Through prose and poetry, children explore the versatility of the written word and learn to master its depth of meaning. Let's go beyond this. We have Ishita with us today and we're going to have a great conversation around this topic. Hi Ishita. It's wonderful to be on your podcast. So let's begin with is there such a thing as children's literature? Well, I definitely think there is. There always has been from some of the earliest fairy tales to nursery rhymes, fables, epics. Um there've always been stories for children however what i would say is that the purpose of children's literature has probably changed um earlier stories were told um to give a moral lesson of some kind or learning or for instructional purposes or perhaps even as cautionary tales uh today you have children's liter- literature that is being written for the pure purpose of enjoyment for pleasure for the delight of young readers so i definitely think that there always has been a genre of uh, literature called children's literature and um it's um flourishing today that's what we think so what do you think is the origin of children's literature well when you ask me this question of what is the origin of children's literature what comes to mind is this image of uh, a bunch of children sitting around a fire uh being narrated stories to by um, their grandparents or elders of of the community or the tribe when there was no printed word and um uh, all stories were passed down through an oral culture um and uh, uh that's the first thing that comes to mind so um i think those were the some of the earliest stories some of the earliest fables some of the earliest fairy tales and then i think came along the printed word but i think the printed word was taken so seriously that um most published literature both for adults as well as for children was primarily for the purpose of moral instruction or religious instruction of some kind and um perhaps only with uh, the passage of time did uh, people realize that you could also write stories and print and publish stories just for um, the pleasure of reading them for the amusement of children and i i suppose gradually that tradition uh, began to break and uh, children began to read stories just for the uh, joy of being entertained or informed about the world could you please brief us the purposes and values of children's literature um so the first one i would say is um just the sheer joy the sheer pleasure of reading as an activity um it's it's um wonderful to just see a child looking around for a book in a library or or in a bookstore uh as if the child is on a is on a quest or a mission of some kind um childhood is a time that we associate with a sense of curiosity of wonder of exploration and uh, what better way to do that uh than reading books which sets your imagination wild and free and um so that's one purpose second purpose according to me of course is um to be better informed to be more aware of the world to be aware of differences to be more sensitized and empathetic uh, to realities other than your own to be literally brought outside your own self and your own reality um because when you read you um very often identify with different characters their world views their relationship to other characters how they navigate their world and that broadens your world view that broadens your um, your uh, uh, ability to empathize to understand the world 
and um, so that's reason number two. That's the second purpose. Third purpose, I would say, there's so many, but I would say just understanding the aesthetic value, the aesthetic usage of language, and um, kind of being a co-partner or a co-author in the process of creating a new world. Reading, um, unlike what it appears to be, is not a very passive activity. Uh, a person who's reading is uh, actively collaborating in the process of creating meaning. And that is what a child is doing constantly when they read, unlike perhaps, you know, playing a video game or watching television. So um, uh, I feel that's, that's, that's um, a very worthwhile thing to do. We also know research has shown us that that children who read tend to be more emotionally, psychologically resilient. They tend to be better at finding um, solutions, understanding what the consequences of their actions may be, understanding, um, anticipating um, problems, better problem solvers. Um, so many purposes to, to uh, reading children's literature. I don't know where I, I would stop. So those are just about three. Wonderful. So, Ishita, how do you choose age-appropriate children's literature? I think um, the first thing that is important to understand is that the term age-appropriate in itself is largely a bracket, um, where which doesn't mean that every 12-year-old would be at the same reading level. It just indicates broadly where uh, children are developmentally, both cognitively as well as emotionally, and what range of books might be appropriate for them. However, that is not to say that every child of the same age bracket can read and appreciate and enjoy the same kind of book. So that's one thing. So it's very important to um, identify the level of the particular child to whom you're referring a book or the group of children to whom you're referring a book. Um, as far as picking the books are concerned, uh, I think it's important to do the hard work of reading the book right, uh, if you have doubts about it, and um, or asking people who uh, could give you good recommendations. Reading good book reviews from time to time is an interesting way to know what's um, out there, what people have to say about the book, what the content of the book is. Um, also, I like to uh, nose around through a whole lot of book lists sometimes, um, you know, prize winning short lists and long lists they're good indicators sometimes when you pick up good books they also lead you to other good books so it's like going down a rabbit hole visiting um, libraries and uh, bookstores often will also give you a, a good idea of what all is available and uh, maybe relevant a lot of books these days come with an age recommendation as well but um, again if something says 9 to 12 that's According to me, a very wide age bracket. A 12-year-old may not necessarily always um, connect with a book that says 9 to 12. It may be closer to what a 10 or an 11-year-old might. So you have to use your own personal discretion over there and also the preferences of the child. Yes, absolutely. A child's preference has to be brought into picture. And why is age-appropriate material important at all? Well, first of all, um, it's important because you don't want your child reading either too much above or below um, their cognitive level because both are recipes for just losing interest in the in the activity of reading. If you're reading something that is incomprehensible to you, you'll find it to be a purposeless ex exercise. And if you're reading way below your interest or your um, language level, then you, you'll find it too easy. You'll think that it's not worthwhile to read. You'll probably want to do something else. So which is why that's one reason why um, choosing age-appropriate material is very important. Um, with little children, it's fairly easy to choose this age-appropriate material because um, little children, at, at least till the age of 12, prefer to read language that is simpler, uh, material that has more pictures in it, more visually engaging, um, close to their own cultural contexts and realities. As children grow, they start wanting to explore the larger world. And it's um, in this age of adolescence is where all, you know, uh, a little bit of uh, confusion creeps in because um, 
here you have children wanting to know about the world having difficult questions about themselves um, their identities things that happen in the world and ideally books are a great way to introduce them to these issues and to enable them and assist them in working out a lot of these problems for themselves forming opinions about them um but i think a lot of adults also tend to panic here and tend to feel that um children's lit- because it's children's literature it needs to be completely sanitized which um is is not very realistic because as children grow you also want to show them the reality of the world rather than keeping them in a completely cloistered world where everything is is um, uh, you know absolutely charmed and they live a charmed existence um part of the of reading is also about working through um your own difficult emotions your own difficult thoughts your own um ideas about the world and difficult things that happen in the world like violence and and abuse or death or maybe deprivation so um that's where i think in that adolescent age that that uh, we tend to um panic a little bit and want to shelter children completely and um it could potentially lead to what we see happening in some countries where a lot of children's books are just outright banned I mean, nobody really thought about uh that we would see a day when mouse would be banned but it has been and um uh that i feel is a bit of a knee jerk reaction it completely defeats the purpose of um uh why children should read what they read and i think very often the problem is not so much that children don't really have a problem with the content it's it's um adults very often deciding what children should read and they have the 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 opinions and the reactions and um all of that so um that's where i think we need to be a little bit careful with that age of 12 13 14 yes you're right Ishita, you think there's enough children's literature available in the Indian market? Mm, I would say what we're seeing right now is a kind of boom in children's literature. Uh I think any bookshop, bookstore or library worth its name would have a dedicated children's section. Um unlike what it was maybe say 15 20 years ago. Um I do feel however that a lot of the lit- children's literature is targeted at a younger age group which is say 5 to maybe 12 um when we come to the young adult um section um you have a lot of primarily non-indian writers who dominate that uh, section and um the entire genre of of young adult is uh fairly debatable because i think any 14 year old who is also a reader is definitely uh borrowing or stealing books from their parents bookshelf for sure uh so they are at an age where they are ready to read what we call you know real adult literature also um yet on the other hand teenagers have always had a complaint that you know they they don't really, nobody really understands them or their world so it's it's interesting that there is a genre that exists to depict their perspective and their realities from their eyes and that's wonderful um but we don't i do still feel we don't have enough indian writers uh in the young adult um, section writing for indian teenagers uh, it's primarily dominated by non indian uh, uh, writers and um also i would say that one has to be a little careful with the young adult section because here because it's teenagers and we're talking about teenage issues um some books are quite relevant some are not there isn't as much parental screening that happens with this age group so for example if a child picks up the perks of being a wallflower i would say that's fine but if a child picks up say 13 reasons why i would worry a little bit you know um so there needs to be a little more screening involved here as well in the young adult uh, uh, genre um but i do feel that um, uh, compared to when i was growing up and we did not have as many options um both in terms of quality as well as quantity we are seeing a boom in the children's uh, literature section so which is great there's there's more choice 
um there's more to read and hopefully then children will become more discerning critics as well of what they, of the material that they read so yes certainly there has been an advancement over these years thank you so much ishita for being on board and it was pleasure to have you thank you again it was such a pleasure talking to you and thank you so much book bibuli for being such a wonderful and much needed platform for parents and children i hope to hear many 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 more of your podcasts wish you all the luck for the future